I've been flying the DJI Mini 3 drone for about 3 months now and 2 of those I spent in Hawaii. So it has taken me some time to make this video, but here is my long term 3 months review of the DJI Mini 3 drone. Now this tiny 249 gram drone is probably the most hyped up drone ever since DJI made the original Mini. But is it really going to replace my Mavic Air 2S and take its place in my travel bag? Unlike the Mini 2, the Mini 3 comes packed with new features, features we've only seen in bigger drones. It has features like 4K60, 1080p slow motion, tri-directional obstacle sensing, focus track and 10-bit HDR up to 30fps, hyperlapse, 48 megapixel photos and vertical mode to mention a few. It's just filled with candy. Now talking about 10-bit d like this will give you more flexibility when color grading your footage, it's also easier to grade your footage with different styles either with LUTs or if you decide to build your look from ground up. Now when I first got my hands on the Mini 3, my only option was to shoot 8-bit with a normal color profile, but even the normal colors looked good so personally I didn't care that much. Now since the Mini 3 has obstacle avoidance sensors, it really came in handy when we went for hikes deep into the tropical forest. This allowed me to push the drone forward and it will just scan and calculate the route to avoid the obstacles in front. Even though the Mini 3 doesn't have side sensors, it only has front, back and downwards facing sensors, you wouldn't worry about it too much. It does a really impressive job, even if you go all crazy and just fly like a maniac. And in the settings tab, you can also select whether you want the obstacle avoidance sensors to calculate a route to fly on the side, above or below the object or subject you're flying towards, which is the bypass option, or if it should break and hover. And as an additional option, you can also select whether sideways flying should be enabled or not when using obstacle avoidance. Having this on won't allow you to fly the drone from side to side and is a really neat feature if you're just getting into drones or you want to fly in a straight line whilst keeping it safe. Note that the obstacle avoidance sensors is only available in normal and cinematic mode, so you won't be able to have this if you're flying sports mode. And with the obstacle avoidance on, you can also get some pretty cool and amazing shots just by letting the Mini 3 calculate the route and just do everything for you. It also makes it safer to get closer to objects or fly in places you normally wouldn't fly. So let's talk a little bit about the camera. The Mini 3 can shoot up to 4K60 and it has the ability to shoot vertical videos. This is a game changer for me and I really love this vertical mode. Being able to shoot high quality videos and just post it on Instagram, it's just amazing. Now shooting in 4K60, you won't be able to have the HDR, but you have the option to slow down the footage more in post-production, so in a 24fps timeline, you can slow the footage down to 40% speed, which makes it super smooth and cinematic. But I actually recorded most of my videos in 24 and 30 FPS. Having that HDR, the image looked so much better. I have more control over the highlights and shadows, and in 30 FPS, I was still able to slow it down to 80% speed just to add a little bit of slow motion to the clip. Now I also found the vertical mode to be quite interesting. With a tap of a button, I could easily shoot vertical videos for Instagram without having to crop the footage. Not only made it the quality much better, but the editing process of a reel was so much faster. It was basically tap the button, record a video, export it to any device or just over to your cell phone and then just post it on Instagram, add some music to it, which is also built into Instagram and then just hit you know publish and that's it it's super easy and convenient one of the downsides with taking the mini 3 to hawaii this early was the lack of nd filters so all of the footage that i shot with my paddleboard for example had a lot of glare and reflections and at times it also made it hard to spot the things i needed to film i also found myself constantly changing the shutter speed and at times i ended up with a shutter of 1 over 2500 plus which is not ideal at all. You're gonna have such a contrasty image and it's gonna be so sharp and it's not gonna be natural at all. So for the first time I flew mostly in auto mode and I was actually surprised over how convenient it was and I have mentioned this in one of my earlier videos as well. Actually never flown auto mode. I always flown manual mode or promo whatever DJI decides to call it but auto mode it was actually quite interesting. I really, I really liked it. 
Now my shutter was still high though, but I didn't have to change the settings for every turn I did with the Mini 3. And the Mini 3 actually did an amazing job. But even flying in full auto, you would need some ND filters, especially if you want to film in bright conditions like midday, the ND filters will keep your shutter down regardless of flying in auto or pro mode or manual mode and will also give you that natural cinematic motion blur. Now, we finally have some ND filters on the market from different companies. Personally, I have some favorites which I always reach out to for ND filters. The one that I use here with my Mini 3 is the ND filter by Freewell. And thanks to DJI, the filters are now so much easier to place. You just turn the stock filter, take it off, select the ND filter you want to put on, place it on the lens and just twist, and that's it. It's so much faster than before and it feels so much safer. Now, the Mini 3 combo that I have is with the brand new RC controller, but it seems like a lot of people have mixed feelings about this. Some like it and some hate it, but I think there's more positive things to say about this controller than you might realize. It's really light, so it barely adds any weight to your travel bag. It has a built-in screen so you don't have to mess around with connecting your phone to be able to fly. You can easily turn on the controller and the drone and it will automatically connect to each other and in a few seconds you should be able to fly. Now, one of the things you need to keep in mind though is this tiny drone does not have any internal fan, which can help it cool. So, it can get really, really hot. Really hot. I noticed this a few times in Hawaii when filming midday and facing towards the direction of the sun. I didn't fly high or for long, but landing and picking up the drone, it felt like I placed my hand on a stove and it was hot. I also noticed some lens fog which kinda ruined some of my shots. This could either be the same issue which happened with a few other early models or because of the extreme heat and me flying towards the sun. It's most likely the last one as I haven't experienced the same issue here in Norway. But if you happen to see your image getting brighter without changing any settings, this could be a warning sign and you should land and check your lens. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have experienced any similar issues with lens fog and where were you flying when you experienced this issue. Now let's talk a little bit about the battery life. If you already have a drone or are looking to get a drone, whether this is your first or the fifth drone that you own, battery life is really important. On the Mini 3 it says 34 minutes of flight time, but this is in optimal conditions, most likely indoors just hovering in the air using settings that drains the least amount of battery. What I got was an average flight time of around 26 minutes, depending on how I was flying and how far. Flying this in the forest, I peaked at 29 minutes. There was no wind and I was only flying slow and not far away from where I was standing, so this was the closest I got to optimal conditions. Pushing the drone and flying all crazy in sports mode, I was all the way down to about 20 minutes at times. Only having one battery, that really sucked. But for the average user, flying and recording a little bit of everything, like a few slow motion shots, some 4K60, 4K HDR, a few quick shots, hyperlapses, and some tracking, and also considering the time it takes to come back and land your drone, I would say about 24 to 26 minutes, depending on how you fly, how hard you are on the stick, and if you're gonna fly out, how much you fly in sports mode, and so on. It's enough for most people, including myself, and the charge time of a single battery is about 60 minutes, so getting a few extra batteries wouldn't hurt. Now the Flymore kit that I have here comes with a charging hub and two extra batteries, and is a must have if you ask me. It was a bummer that I couldn't get my hands on a Flymore kit in Hawaii. Though, I think it was awesome that I was the first ever to capture some cinematic shots in Hawaii with the DJI Mini 3, so I can live with the fact that I didn't manage to get a Flymore kit when staying in Hawaii. So one of the things I've struggled with when traveling to Hawaii in the past is signal loss. I've lost one drone because of this and almost lost another. I don't know if it's the mountains that mess around with my signal or if I just keep getting bad products. So bringing this brand new Mini 3 to Hawaii, I didn't really know what to expect. But I knew that the island of Oahu didn't have any in stock and they were expected to be available between August and September. Now I know there has been a lot of signal issues reported with this controller and some of you have reported issues just after a few hundred meters. I've also done a comprehensive test with this RC controller to see if I had any issues with the model I received. I'll leave that video down in the description below if you want to check it out. 
but from all the flying I've been doing in Hawaii, I didn't really have any problems. I rarely flew longer than 1000 meters and the worst I had was two bars of signal drop for half a second and that's it. Now the RC controller doesn't have any external antennas, these are built into the front of the controller itself, so you would have to point this directly towards the drone to get the best and most stable signal. But overall, it's a great drone for beginners as well as professionals, considering the drone restrictions and the places you can fly with a bigger drone. This Mini 3 would be the perfect companion. It basically has everything you need, 4K60, 4K HDR, decent like 10 bit, slow motion and tracking. The obstacle avoidance sensors will keep your drone safe and you basically don't have to worry about anything when you're flying. Now the Mini 3 is of course pretty new and the same goes with the RC controller and with new firmware updates it will just get better. Now for me, traveling half the world, it has been the perfect travel drone. It has everything I need to create content, even vertical mode for crispy, high quality Instagram reels. You will see more of this drone in my Hawaii video, which is coming later. So I couldn't recommend this drone more. It's just perfect or as perfect as it can get. So if you haven't got a Mini 3 already and you're looking into getting a drone, you should definitely consider getting one if they have one in stock nearby. And on the way, make sure to pick up one of the filter packs from Freewell. Now, if you already own a Mini 3, let me know down in the comments below how's your experience and have you or have you not experienced any issues with the Mini 3 itself or the RC controller. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you found it helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.